Hey everybody, it's Dr. Moody Charter back again for another hoot hoot. Wow, crazy week, uh, breeding season. Gonna talk about a little bit of a darker side of nature, which is sibilicide nestlings eating other nestlings. We also have intruders uh, that come in predate nestlings. Unfortunately, in, in barn owl box number two, we got to see both. In this video, I'm just gonna talk about the sibilicide not the most pleasant of things to hear, but it's a reality in nature and better to know it and understand it than not understand it and be shocked when it happens. So let's get into it. So we're here in Israel, Barnard Cam number two, that um, nestlings, they hatched at different days. There's a huge difference in, in size. The oldest nestling was nine days older than the third nestling. The second nestling was five days older than the third nestling. It, so you had these two larger nestlings and these two smaller nestlings that were much, much, much smaller. And in, in this case, the uh, at one point, the, one of the nestlings tried to eat the other nestling while it's still alive. This is called siblicide. Nestlings try to keep eat each other. This is very dramatic and they're doing so next to the, you can see there's actually a vole there but there's still this nestling is still trying to eat the other one. Um, there's two different types of sibilicide. There's obligate sibilicide which happens in eagles that the older nestling always kills the younger nestling. Uh, this happens in species like eagles. With barn owls it's not the case, it's a facultative um, sibilicide and it happens sometimes typically when there's a lack of food and this is a case with barn owls. So here the nestling is trying to eat another nestling and you're saying but there's food, there's a vole. Yes, but what are we lacking? The female. Where's the mom? Now the mother left because she went out to hunt, the male brought this vole and left it there because he does not feed the nestling, does not break apart small pieces of meat, the female does. So in this case the female is missing, so the nestling is hungry, has not ate enough, so it goes on and eats the smaller nestling. Sometimes we have a, a nest boxes even up to 11 nestlings that they all sur for, survive. In this case the parents, the father does an amazing job bringing enough prey and the female does an amazing job protecting the nestlings and feeding them which takes a lot of time and energy breaking tiny tiny pieces to make sure they're all fed because if they're not fed well enough the older ones will try to eat the other smaller ones this is very sad watching this is is always heartbreaking but this is uh, heartbreaking this is a, a sad reality a harsh reality of nature and it's very very common in barn owls Typically, they're not able to raise all the nestlings and at least some of them die and are eaten. Now, there's within the, uh, the sibilicide, there is two forms that we see and one is that the nestlings, uh, which are, are more common is, is the nestlings outcompete each other, eats the food and then the smaller ones don't get enough food and die, they starve. They don't get enough food and they, they, they die because of lack of food and after they're dead, the mother will feed the, the the other nestlings is body or or, or it, it'll die because not enough food and then if the nestling is a little bit older they'll actually eat it themselves. That's very common in barn owls, uh, it happens a lot. Now this type of sibilicide that we're seeing here, the, the nestling is actually killed the other nestling is not as common. We don't see this as much um, and, it, and, it, and it happens only when the nestlings are very very small. And, and when the older, when they have this huge difference in size, their nestlings are hungry and at that point the older nestlings sometimes kill and try to small, uh, swallow the, the smaller nestlings. But again this only happens when the nestlings are very small, when they're older and larger uh, this doesn't happen. Um, but in, in this case it happened uh, in this box, it's very sad to see. It, it could have been prevented if the female is there to feed the vole, but she can't be there because she has to provide prey. Barn owls are limited by not only nest sites sometimes, but also by food. And when there's not enough food, they're unable to raise the nestlings. This is a sad reality of nature, but it happens for a reason, because if they were able to fledge more nestlings than there's resources around the nest box in the area, the nestlings would leave the box and die of starvation after. So it is better they die at a younger age inside of the box than leaving the box and then starving, uh, dying from starvation outside of the box. 
So even though this is common, it does not mean that barn owls are not able to raise all the nestlings. They are, and, and this happens when a father, the male does a great job bringing enough food, and then a female does a great job feeding all the tiny nestlings, investing a time, it's a team. But, but this only happens when there's enough resources, when there's enough rodent prey in and, and around the box, which doesn't happen all the time. Albanos do not live the longest. They don't have long lifespans. Uh, maybe the average, if they, in the first year, I think 75, 80% of them probably die within their first year, but if they survive the first year, maybe they'll live four years. So they want to reproduce the most they mount they can raise the most amount of nestlings they can in that short period period of time. That's why uh, the female does lay many eggs, um, and she's not always able to raise all those eggs. Um, but in in certain years, they're able to. I mean, in Israel, it's very common in many years that they raise eight, nine uh, nestlings. Fortunately, we don't have many cameras in a location that they raise more. Uh, but we've had, I think it was uh, uh, last year, they uh, a barn owl people had uh, seven or eight nestlings that fledge. So it, it, it is common and it happens, but it's also common that uh, as the breeding season increases, depending on the quality up here, the, um, some of them will have nestlings that die, very common. So siblicide is something that it, it exists in nature much more than what we would assume. Um, and this is a reality of nature, but that's how nature works. Na nature works that s some animals survive, but other don't. In this case, by dying, the, this, the, uh, the nesting that died helped provide subsidence for its older nesting and also reduces competition within the nest box. Does kind of two things by dying. So genetically, its genes continue uh, through its siblings. That said, it's still horrible to watch. Every time we see these things in their cameras, uh, uh, I, I know barn owls so much. I've, first of all, I learned so much from these cameras. It's amazing. Uh, but, but it's always so sad to see and you always hope that all of them will survive even though you know in advance that the chances of them all surviving is not the greatest. There's a very good chance they'll die. Uh, in, in, uh, in, in a case like this, it may be a little bit more rare, but again, this pair uh, had seven eggs five uh, nestlings hatched. One of the smaller ones died immediately in the first day. Um, so the peer was not bringing enough food. The male was not able to bring enough food to feed the female, which even though she's in the box and doesn't um, she still needs to eat. So he has to feed the female in the nestlings and there just was not enough food. That's another thing, if the female is not fed enough uh, um, herself, then she will need to go out and hunt too. Like she'll need to find food and she may not be a better, a great mother and be able to break off pieces of prey and stuff like that. So again, this is super sad and dramatic to see this. You can see the other smaller nestling there um, is still there. Um, so the question is, can these things be prevented? In, um, in a yes, but probably the, answer, the correct answer is no. It can be prevented if, uh, if the parent is there and able to breed enough prey. But again, uh, uh, this is why one people that one of my uh, main things this channel, we always say we don't like to intervene and, and the reason is simple. Uh, the majority of times that I've seen people intervene, we do it for ourselves more than the animals. I love barn owls. I love them a lot. I love all the animals. But who am I to d decide to intervene in nature? Nature has evolved a certain way in order to give the animals the greatest per, uh, chances of survival. So by intervening, I'm changing that. I'm, I'm, I'm intervening, I'm changing something that should not have happened. Um, in, in this case, you can explain it very easily that by intervening, let's say feeding uh, these barn owls, so we could fatten these nestlings up, give the female so much food, she'll, she'll, she won't even leave, uh, need to leave the hunt herself. Um, so the nestlings will be very, very, very healthy. But once they fledge from the nest and start being independent, there's not enough resources in the area. There's not enough food to feed them, so they'll die. So I could do this for the uh, your entertainment, that you'll be happy at home, that look at all these beautiful nestlings, they're, they're fat, they're hungry, they're, they're, they're eating a lot, they're very healthy. Now you may be happy at home by watching these nestlings grow, um, but but it would, it would be, um, 
it'd be fiction because it wouldn't be a real thing because I know that after that, the, the, the fat, cute nestling that's super happy inside the box, when it fledges, it's gonna die of starvation, which is a worst possible type of death uh, that, that can happen. In particular, the older they are, the more developed they are. Uh, so the more harsh it, it becomes. Um, so I, I'm not gonna intervene in order to get more likes in YouTube. Uh, I prefer, one of my main goals in this channel is having you to be able to see how nature really is. Um, and there's beautiful parts of it, the majority is beautiful, but you do have these harsh, harsh parts that are a reality. Now, uh, the shelter you or from these things, I think is wrong. Uh, this, you should be 18 or older by watching these videos. That's what it's at least clicked. Uh, and that we should be old enough to understand that uh, the reality of different things in nature uh, and that there is a harsh part of nature, just like these beautiful barn owls that we love them. They're so beautiful and so cute. They eat cute little rodents. Uh, some of these rodents can be super nice and even be pets. And, uh, and, and it's ironic that most people don't have any problem with the barn owls eating and killing cute rodents, uh, but they do have problems uh, uh, with the nestlings, the predator themselves dying. Both are, are part of a harsh reality of nature. One, you have the cute little rodent that's eaten by the, the big strong predator, and you have the predator that doesn't always survive and sometimes it itself uh, dies. So it, these are harsh, harsh realities of nature. Now, one of my major fears of, of these um, cases of the female leaving the box to hunt is with um, intruders. Um, is that when the female's not there, one of the main roles of the female is, is not only to, uh, so they ate the, the first nestling and unfortunately the second small nestling was also killed. You can see here the uh, number two now is going on in, in uh, trying to kill the, the last of the two small nestlings. So the female's role is to not only feed the nestlings, with the male brings the food, uh, the female breaks apart and feed the food. Female's also there to keep them warm. But one, it turns out one of the major roles of the female is defend the nestling from predators. Now, at first we did not realize how common this was, but because of these live cams, uh, we, ha we can have predators of other species, but we can also have uh, um, intraspecific predators, which are barn owls. Uh, barn owls themselves can predate other barn owls, and it turns out they have no problem doing so. Um, and I'll make a, a, a specific video on this later, because unfortunately in this box, we had a intruder come in and I'll make a, a, a specific uh, a video on that soon. But th these intruders could be, uh, or a uh, nestling from another box that fledges and goes out and looks for food, hungry, as I said, they can starve, finds a nest box with tiny nestlings and will eat them. Or it could be an adult that's also hungry that uh, happens upon a barn owl box and will eat the nestlings. So uh, when there's not enough food, barn owls are opportunistic and will eat other barn owls. So it's way more common than what we previously thought, and it happens. So the female not being here is, is, is a problem, not only because the, uh, the nestlings, if they're tiny, can eat each other, the siblicide, as we witnessed here with uh, these two larger nestings uh, going after and eating the first, the, the, the one of the two nestlings, and now here, the other nestling. So this is a, a, a can happen, but also because uh, intruders can come. Here the, the female ends up coming back and stopping the nestling from actually eating because once the female came back, she starts feeding the nestlings and, and they put it down. Uh, but later the, um, the nestling again, even though the mother is there, was still hungry, didn't get enough food and went on to finish eating that nestling, which these are just a just, uh, very sad reality. The siblicide is, is, I wish it didn't exist. So, but it does, and here's a little, that was a short little background about siblicide. So I really hope you like this video. 
It is an interesting thing, the Sibla side. Uh, very sad always. Um, wish that all the nestlings would hatch and fledge and live amazing lives. But this is not the reality. This is not how nature works. So I want to thank everybody for all your time stamps. Uh, without your observations, we would not know how this amazing stuff is happening. So thank you so much. You participate greatly in, in this channel. The moderator is the best. You are the best. Without you, I would not be able to do it. Help collect all this information and, and clips and everything. Yeah, they're truly, truly the, the best. Um, and we're trying to provide you, to show you the realities of nature without filtering, without beautying it up and stuff like that. So if you like this content and you can help donate, we really need your money to keep this channel going. It's a nonprofit project. Uh, so thank you for everybody that donated. If you'd like to donate, I, I added a link in the description. So please do not forget to like, comment, subscribe. Keep on watching. Hoochie later.